Hello everyone. I just wanted to make a really quick video because I can't talk very well. Just to let you know why I haven't been around and why I may not be around for a while. Uh, I have been sicker than I've ever been. <laughs> this, this past month and, and, and last month, I've just been going through a lot <laughs> uh, physically too. Um, two days ago, I went into anaphylactic shock and I, I honestly thought I was gonna die because just the things I was feeling. And um, I'm not out of the woods yet because um, those symptoms can come back in a three or four days. So I really won't be out of the woods until maybe Saturday or, or Sunday. But I'm monitoring all my vital signs and, and just trying to stay calm. It's hard when you're having all these scary symptoms. And like right now, my I'm so swollen inside here. You can't really see it, but I can feel it. And it hurts. <laughs> and the pressure and the stiffness in my neck. I won't get into all that, but shortness of breath, all this stuff. It's just like, I feel like I have a terrible flu or cold and I don't, but uh, I had a really bad allergic reaction to, I'm not, I think it was a medication that I tried, but I also had some to certain foods. So I think it was a combination of all of that that sent me into shock. But um, anyway, long, long story short, <laughs> um, I'm very dizzy, so bear with me. Um, but this is the worst I've felt. probably in over 10 years. Um, but on a grief related topic, I did want to say, it's amazing how being physically ill can exacerbate your grief to way up here like i've noticed that just in the past week my grief my grief has skyrocketed like and i know that goes along with feeling physically awful and honestly i thought i was I, th I thought I was going to die the other day because my head started, <laughs> felt like my throat was closing up and my head felt like it was just going to implode. It was awful. Uh, my ears started doing crazy things. They still feel stuffed up. Um, I felt like the eardrums were going to burst and I, I, I couldn't hear. I still can't hear right. All these things, just, I think the fear and the anxiety that goes with all of that, you know, plus the pain, <laughs> um, it just, it just overwhelms you. And then the grief creeps in and it just, it's like it slams you in the face again because number one, I just, bawled my eyes out because 
when you go through something like this, you just want your spouse. You want your spouse to be there with you. And it's overwhelming because you know what I mean if you've been sick. <laughs> you just want them. You want them there to go through it with you and hold your hand and just be in the room with you. <laughs> you just want them there, you know? You don't want to go to all these doctors and appointments without them. You want them there with you because they were comfort and they helped you even if they didn't do anything. So I've just had these crying spells just where I just weep because I want my husband with me. He always calmed me down. He always helped me. <laughs> so if you're new to this grief thing, <laughs> this horrible, awful grief thing, just know that if you get sick or, or you have to like go to the hospital or the dentist or whatever, Just know it's hard and it's perfectly normal to have a breakdown because you just miss them and you just want them there with you and it makes it worse it exacerbates your pain your physical pain <laughs> and it makes your grief worse and So just know that's normal. It sucks, <laughs> but it's normal. I just feel so lonely without my husband. It's not the same. It never will be. I bet a lot of you have gone through that. I'm sorry. I know how you want them there. My husband would have held my hand through the whole thing, no matter what I had to go through. It's tough to go through stuff alone. I'm thankful for my friends and family. That I do have. I don't have many at all, but you know, even if you have that, it's not the same. I was reading a book where this lady had lost her husband. True story. And she she got cancer, she lived, but you know, she got cancer right after her husband died. And her two friends were taking her to her appointments. And even though she was thankful to have those two friends, she just had a total breakdown in the parking lot. <laughs> she just fell to her knees in, in the parking lot of the, the cancer center and she just started weeping and screaming, saying, this is not right. My husband is supposed to be here with me, not you. And you know, she loved her friends, but you know what that's like. You love them, but it's not, it's not the same. You want your spouse there. Sorry. <sighs> so that's a hard thing to go through. And I'm going to wrap this video up because 
I just need to rest, but <sighs> just wanted you to know where I am, and I actually have been talking to a, a new doctor this past week, and she actually enrolled me in one of her medical classes um, because of all the stuff I'm dealing with. <laughs> And it's an eight-week course that she's putting me through. And it's there's a lot of work involved. There's homework. There's exercises. There's things you have to do. So the next eight weeks might be a little busy for me. I kind of feel like I'm in medical school. Sorry, that <laughs> the oven over there is clicking. It kind of distracts me. Um, I feel like I'm in medical school because <laughs> I have like three hours of lectures. Uh, not every day, but almost every day I have three hours of lectures to go to and then I have to take notes and classes and stuff like that. But, um, it's a lot of education about the brain and the nervous system and, and how your emotions affect, you know, your pain and all that stuff. But, uh, so I'm going to be in school for the next eight weeks. So it may be a busy time for me. But, um, I'm also dealing with my health and these allergic reactions and I, I just feel sick. So there's a lot going on. And, and, and then my, my poor uncle and my dad are going through a hard time. And then and then my, it's hard on my mom too. My, my uncle has, has a really serious cancer now and he's gonna have to go through like six weeks of radiation and then this like 13 hours surgery, which is, I, I, the things they're gonna have to do to get to his, it's in his sinuses and, and they're gonna have to like take all these bones out of his face and it's just a mess. <laughs> so if you could pray for my family, and me, I'd really appreciate it because we're just going through the ringer. <laughs> we're going through it right now. And it makes me miss my husband extra hard. So, so extra hard. Because he was really the rock. He was my rock. And I'm sorry for you guys. I know some of you have lost your mom, who, who was like the rock of the family and held it together. And it's just, <laughs> when you lose that, and then you, you have a parent that's grieving and then, then your whole family just seems different. I know. <laughs> When you've lost your spouse, that was your rock for years or decades. Oh, man, that's not easy. <laughs> oh. but I'm going to go for now because my, my pain is getting a lot worse. So I'm going to have to go. Do something as I can feel my pain getting worse. It's probably because I'm getting emotional. <laughs> so let me go try to calm down and um, hang in there, you guys, and just know this road has a lot of ups and downs. And sometimes you get slammed right after a loss. 
you just get slammed with all these other things. And it feels like the whole world is falling apart. I just keep crying out to God every day. I don't know what he's doing. But I just keep asking him every day. To show me. What do you want me to learn from this God? What are you trying to say? You know, just keep crying out to the Lord. That's the only thing I know to do. It's the only hope we have. But Lord willing, I'll be back <laughs> at some point. <laughs> okay, I love you guys. You take care, okay? Hang in there.